Having observed the Days of the Dead in Cruz Blanca, Veracruz, I rode a bus to Mexico City on November 3rd. I then arrived at the International Airport and checked into one of the attached hotels. Its lobby areas bedecked in life-size skeletal figures and florid altar arrangements for the holiday. This colorful spread by the hotel's cafe highlights deities representing Earth, Moon, and Death, among the Mexica Aztecs who would occupy the capital Tenochtitlan. After I settled into my room, I headed out to where the Aztec capital had once stood, now the Zócalo, the heart of Mexico City. While I was awaiting an old friend, I wandered between the National Cathedral and the city square, a massive altar complex then erected for the Days of the Dead pageantry. I would revisit the construction toward the end of the downtown tour, so we will see it in lit detail at this episode's conclusion. Knowing my fascination with the holiday, my friend guided me to the Plaza de Santo Domingo, northwest of the city square. An art show presented handmade works from local schools, such as this wall of plaques, each uniquely designed by an individual student. The theme along this plaza's display was the revolution of 1910. Emiliano Zapata, one of the military leaders in central Mexico, is celebrated nowadays for his defense of the indigenous peoples and their land rights. Indeed, his slogan of land and liberty frequented the works, as upon the black banner in his right hand. Emiliano Zapata is renowned as a legend of the revolution for his indigenous rights and roots. This sugar skull effigy reclines upon a Days of the Dead altar frame. Native designs embellish the cranium, notably the feathered serpent's imposing grin at left. From the engineering department comes this festive piece, with many features iconic of the season. At center is an elegant lady skeleton called the Catrina, popularized by the satirical art of José Guadalupe Posada. Along the pastel pink board are stenciled banners and skull masks, also after the Zapata theme. And across the bottom stand bouquets of marigold blossoms known as Sempachutil, traditionally ornamenting the altar space. One of my favorite works from the art show, this diorama features a procession of skeleton soldiers on skeleton horses. Here, too, repeats the slogan, Land and Liberty. As my friend and I were returning to Mexico City Square, we stopped to order a gordita from a street vendor. It was a pancake grilled from sweetened flour over the hot comal surface at left. You can also see the vendor beginning to spread a generous layer of cajeta, a thick caramel made with goat milk. We split the hot gordita while we walked to the square. Dusk was approaching. Toward the city square corners stood tiered platforms of marigold flowers and a tall pillar representing native arts from the ancient to the new. The curtain behind me represented a cascade of wild animals and praying people, under the flow issued from the mouth of the Mexican rain god atop. Now that we had returned to the city square, we could explore the incredible altar setup at its center in full illumination. An overhead network of pastel lights brought the towering panels together. At each direction, streaming banners guided the view toward the facade. The Altar of Altars represented indigenous Days of the Dead traditions from Mexico's four corners. East, the Huasteca region beside the Gulf of Mexico, where I had just been to observe the sacred rites. South, Yucatan, whose green cross is an emblem of Maya cultural survival. West, the community of Cuanajo, Michoacán, directly inspired this ornate assembly. North, an homage to the Yaqui of Sonora, the ritual table fashioned after the Tapanco altar. Hovering above the shelf are three bearded visages that bring us to today's masks. From left to right, today's masks depict the spirit forms of the wolf, the pajcola, and the jaguar. Anthropologists Peter and Roberta Markman detailed the concept of Huya Ania among the Yaqui and Mayo peoples of Sonora. Huya Ania conveys the outer realms beyond the village in both natural and spiritual sense. Supernatural beings such as the pajcola bridge the worlds within and beyond the human community. The Yaqui and Mayo thus created spirit masks like these, often inspired by dreams of such entities, to ritually interact with the beyond. The Days of the Dead are similarly a special occasion to link the worlds of the living and the spirits, to remind the participants of the family ties that extend into the greater reality of the universe. Please like, share, and subscribe to the Eye of the Serpent channel for updates. Your Patreon support goes toward travel, research, and production. Thank you for watching, happy Days of the Dead, and good roads!